everyone. Wishing you a very warm welcome. I'm glad you were able to make it in time. It's just a couple of minutes that we're waiting for a few more participants to jump in. Uh, given technology is new for some people, we're just allowing them time to come into the session. Myself, Shalini Rabolkar, um, on behalf of India SME Accelerator Network, I'd like to wish all members joining in a very, very warm welcome this afternoon. You've taken out the time to come in and be a part of this free uh, MSME knowledge series webinar. We'll be running through various topics uh, on each day as we schedule it, today being the first on venture capital. Today we have about uh, 55 participants registered to join in here. Uh, and that's great, they're coming from different parts of the country uh, and five of them also international participants. So it's quite encouraging that will allow us to do, keep doing more like this for everybody. The current COVID crisis, as we all know, has kind of impacted us in multiple ways and probably different ways for different people. But uh, I think important for us to realize is that, um, you know, we may be sailing different boats, but end of the day, we're all sailing through the same storm and therefore uh, we're all in it together. So we at India SME Accelerator Network are trying to do every bit that we can to help the small, micro, small, and medium businesses in whatever we, way we can through training, mentoring, and consulting in different formats. So this currently that you are participating is the free webinar format wherein we are gonna be taking up different and unique and very relevant topics that are useful for your businesses and um, you know something that you will gain from so that you are in a position to recover your business and take it up from wherever it is. And probably at the end of it, you're able to transform it to what it should be for what the future is looking out for. So as much as um, you know, government is providing thrust to innovation for MSMEs, you're also aware of the launch of the new portal that's an exclusive portal on innovation. We believe that small businesses are truly looking at this situation as an opportunity to reinvent. And when I say reinvent, it could be in the form of reinventing our own business models, or it could be in the form of, you know, coming out with a new product category, something that's futuristic in nature, whatever format be it, but it's about a new idea that you're looking to nurture. And usually when it comes to innovation and new ideas, the very first thing that comes after the thought is what about funding? Is this gonna be possible? And that's where a topic like this becomes very relevant for MSMEs at this point in the crisis that we're sitting in. So before I introduce uh, more about the topic and the speaker to you, just a few session protocols for us. So all of us enjoy the session well. Um, we would really like you to benefit as much as you can from the session so that you're able to ask all the questions you wish during this period with us. While you're on mute and videos are turned off by default, don't worry. The chat box at the bottom that you can see uh, is where you can type in your questions. Every question that you type in can be typed anytime during the session and it'll come privately to us. So please don't hesitate and don't feel shy about us asking the smallest question and the biggest question that you might have in mind. All of them we shall definitely try to address. So if you're ready, then I would like to now introduce you to our speaker, Mr. Vikrant Potnis. He's the managing director of venture of Forte Magna. Sorry, he's the managing director at Forte, Ma Forte Magna Advisors and Company, which is focused on investment banking, venture capital training, and incubation. He's also the CEO of Fund Enable, a technology kit that entrepreneurs can use to raise capital. That's a very interesting one. He has experience across venture capital and investment banking and has worked on transactions for 200 crores, closely involved in equity fundraising execution across sectors of healthcare, across technology, across pharma companies and consumer products. He's worked with JP Morgan and Springboard Ventures and Oreo Capital Advisors and uh, he's a, a brilliant individual as well. He's currently a visiting faculty at IIM Ahmedabad Exceed XLRI, SPJMR, BAC Institute, and other entrepreneurship development institutes. So I'd really love uh, that you make the best of this session with him and uh, enjoy every bit of it. Over to you, Mr. Vikran Portnis. 
thank you so much uh, thanks a lot for giving me this opportunity to speak at uh, the forum today uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to now present a screen great so uh, today's session is all about how do we go about raising capital for our businesses and especially uh, smes msmes uh, so the first question which i want to address is that when we talk about venture capital funding we always associate it with names like flipkart ola oyo uh, snapdeal and and so called startups right whenever someone talks about vc funding whenever someone talks about equity investment into companies uh, these names come out and these are the names startups is what we discuss the question that i have uh, for all of you is that is vc funding available only for startups is it that you need to be a startup you need to be a technology business with lot of innovation in it uh to kind of raise money do you need to be an app uh, to raise capital uh and that is the misconception that every business owner today in india has that venture capital money is only available for startups i'm going to show you some of the names uh which are pure play smes that are pure play small businesses brick and mortar businesses no app no a great role of technology but a large market and a brand in place for example uh, the first example you will be surprised that all of us would have heard of cycle agarbatti uh, it's it's an agarbatti brand agarbatti brand uh, you know the market was very very fragmented lot of local players but no known brand imagine a private equity fund called motilal oswal has invested massive amount of venture capital money in cycle agarbatti parak foods which is a dairy business they they supply milk cheese etc they have factories where they produce cheese where they produce various milk products and supply across uh, the country that is heavily funded by venture capital investors forging businesses one very interesting business glass wall systems right uh, as you see lot of buildings having glass facades lot of corporate offices having glass facades now here is a company which manufactures glass facades and this business is essentially funded by venture capital we have lot of these mobile phones laptops etc we are consuming these products uh, massively now who is going to do after sales for that so intrago which is only a player focused on after market service we have they have 400 service centers now imagine guys these are not pure play startups these are not app businesses these are not e-commerce businesses and yet these have received massive amount of venture capital and private equity funding so the first point that i want to drive home is that venture capital money is not just available for startups yes startups are raising it startups are talking about it but there are businesses which are futuristic businesses where there are there is a huge market where they've played the brand uh, pretty well and such businesses are actually uh, funded by vcs in the country as well right so for smes and msmes you need to understand this point that vc money is also available for you then why don't we understand or why don't we hear about uh, smes raising money left right and center why is it that we still hear about startups raising money left right and center number one uh, you know the msme sme segment uh, not very good with marketing and pr so they don't talk about it uh, uh, as startups do and second is most of the sme businesses are owned by families are owned by uh you know entrepreneurs who are running these businesses for 20 30 years they don't understand the game of vc funding they are very comfortable with debt dealing with banks but how do you go about talking about raising capital with investors where will i find the investors how do i make an information memorandum what is valuation now these are the questions which too many sme entrepreneurs or most of the sme entrepreneurs do not understand they cannot address and that is the reason why while their business is a great fitment for raising venture capital money they are not able to raise that 
because uh, the game is about understanding how do we go about raising venture capital money which uh, uh, we are going to address uh, you know in this session and going forward as well so the question now is that what gets you vc funding so if you are an sme founder if you are an entrepreneur looking at raising money if you have an idea that you need to actually that you need money for uh, what you need to start with is you need to build your knowledge about fundraising second is you need to have a large market the market needs to be very large it cannot be a very niche uh, product it has to be a massive market the third point is there has to be innovation angle in it or a futuristic angle in it uh, an example a glass facade business right going forward lot of corporate offices lot of complexes are going to have uh, this particular uh, i would say structure right now there is a technology involved there is a you know in terms of the thickness of the glass the tint of the glass the sturdiness of the glass and the founders have invested in that technology have done r and d in that technology and have brought that product to the market so you need to be talking about innovation you need to be talking about the futuristic market backed by a solid product that is something that you need to focus on the fourth point is a scalable business model that you should be able to expand your business beyond states beyond country to large global geographies and that is what we need to keep in mind and finally the most important thing uh, vc money is not on the horse the bet is on the jockey most people uh, don't understand this concept that venture capital money private equity money is not about uh, only about rather business models large market etc it is about the person who is running it lot of times you would meet a person you would want to buy a product from the person but you say that hey you know what i i like the product but ye aadmi theek nahi hai i'm not gaining confidence on that person we see investment is just like that you might have a large market you might have a great product but what about the team have you invested in getting the right team in place now these are some of the questions some of the points which are extremely critical if you are looking at raising capital either for your existing business or if you are looking to back your uh, uh, new idea uh, with venture capital money so the two points that we have kind of discussed so far is vc money is available for smes and msmes what you need to have in place to raise that round of capital is the points that you have in front of your screen let's now understand that if we as smes can raise money what is the market looking at like right now are we even are investors even investing in this market are are, are venture capital investors even backing ideas in this particular market because currently what you are surrounded by is uncertainty low revenue supply side problems possibly you would have done salary cuts at your organization you know these are the terms that we are hearing right now there is a lot of negativity around us and this is not an india specific i would say a uh, problem but it is a global problem that we are uh, facing right now uh, let's understand the impact of this uh corona virus or covid 19 on india from funding perspective what is it going to be like when it comes to funding from an india market perspective for this let's look at certain numbers and let's look at certain numbers uh, uh from uh, the past first and then let's get to 2020 so in 2018 india received around 37 billion dollars of venture capital private equity money out of these 37 billion dollars around 6.5 billion dollars went to really really small businesses new ideas uh, very uh, you know i would say early stage businesses now in 2019 that number went up to 48 billion for the larger pvc market these are private markets right i'm not talking about listed companies private companies and out of that 48 billion 7.9 billion went to very very early stage companies possibly the stage in which we are currently uh, right now as smes right so there was a 22% rise in this number from 
to 2019. So December 2019, we closed at 7.9 billion dollar of investments in the Indian ecosystem. Now, where were we heading in 2020? If things were fine, if there was no COVID-19, then what was happening was we were going for more and more number of deals. The number of deals were rising, and what would have happened was that 7.9 billion dollars would have been 10 billion dollars idea. So, if you consider even a 20 percent rise over 20 2019 number, which was possible and which was what historically was happening. Indian very early stage businesses, very very niche, very new businesses would have received around ten billion dollars of funding if things would have been normal, right? So the way it happens is by December twenty nineteen, ten billion dollars would have already been allocated to Indian businesses. You know, funds would have actually kept aside ten billion dollars for investing in twenty twenty, but. what happened was uh, uncertainty uh, actually kicked in so one thing what we need to figure out right now is that the problem is not about dry powder there is enough money because this 10 billion dollars was kept aside for investing in 2019 right there was enough money available so the problem is not about dry powder the problem is about uncertainty as to what is going to really happen when are we going to kind of move out of it when are we going to actually open the economy uh, when are business is going to get back to normal what is going to be the new normal these are the questions the question is not really about is there money available in the market right uh, so what can possibly happen in 2020 definitely this 10 billion dollars which is allocated for indian new businesses will not going to be zero it it is practically not possible it is not going to be zero what may possibly happen is that 10 billion can be half maybe it can be 5 to 6 billion dollars maybe that 10 billion dollars would become half right uh, funds would invest only 5 billion dollars or 6 billion dollars in the indian Uh, in the indian early stage ecosystem now that becomes guys 40000 crores even if the 10 billion becomes 5 to 6 billion dollars this means that we still have around 40000 crores available for us from venture capital and private equity investors if we are looking at raising money in 2020 right 40000 crores is still available are you planning to raise 100 crores this year even if you are planning to raise 100 crores for your venture this year that is just 0.25% of what is available and therefore uh, the question that we need to address at this point in time is not that whether there is money available or not who will get this money what kind of businesses are going to raise this money what kind of businesses are going to raise uh money in 2020 is the real thing that we need to focus we need to focus on are we the kind of businesses which are falling under the categories which venture capital investors would be interested to fund in 2020 is the real question so from an investment perspective chuck the negativity there is enough money available even if you are looking to raise 100 crores there is money available in the market at this point in time that's wonderful uh, note to begin with on understanding vcs uh, vikrant and uh, we've already you know started getting questions as to you know how we could apply this for ourselves one question uh, that's coming from mr mahesh parmar his question is uh, i'm into institution supplies of uniform etc how can we develop our business and get vc funding okay so uh, you know uh, again it's a very very large market uh, see uh, uh, you are in the right business it is a huge market it is fragmented uh, which means what uh, in in different geographies there would be different players supplying that see typically uh, you have to get out of the commodity business to get vc funding what vc is look at is brands for example uh, there is a kids wear brand in in your segment i would say there is a kids wear brand 
called uh, 612 IB League. Indian Clothing League is the brand. IB League is the brand. Now this brand has raised 50 crores of investment from a fund called ASK Pravi. 50 crores of investment for a kids wear brand. They started off by supplying uniforms to schools across the country. What they realized was with this. we can tap into or we can become a kids wear brand lilliput and catmos were struggling there was actually a big void in the market and this brand came up and said that hey you know what on the b2b side on the uh, school i would say uniform side we are now great but that is a commoditized play what will fetch us funding is that if our knowledge of supplying uh, you know uh, uniforms to kids if we can actually expand that towards becoming a full fledged brand and getting into the retail chain we can get vc funding that is precisely what happened and it's an example from your industry ask pravi gave 50 crores of funding to this particular venture so think out of getting out from commodity towards being a brand play and vc money will be available for you great the next question we have at this point um, is you talked about team so this question is from rajeshri bolaikar and her question is you talked about team so whether a full team should be ready in place and what do we mean by that uh, uh, so very important question and yes uh, the answer to that is the core team is or should be in place for sure Uh, see, uh, it is very clear. We have venture capital investors, idea stage especially. Uh, it is very important to have a solid team and a team uh, which is complementary. For example, three engineers start a technology company. Now that's not the ideal team because all of them are good at product development. But you need to sell the product. You need to raise money. So instead, there is one person who is the CTO who is making core technology. there is another person who has great experience about go to market brand how do we use different channels to take our product to the market and the third pillar there is another guy who is looking at finances raising money etc now these are the guys who are essential to take your business to the next level and their backgrounds do i have relevant background if i am leading uh, go to market in a particular team do i have, have i done it in the past now this is what is critical so you need to have the core team the core three or four people who are important pillars to take your business to the next level need to be in place to raise venture capital money only one founder can only reach a particular place but not beyond that and vc funds require a solid team in place in fact i would say it is vc funding is not a finance business it is actually an hr business it is about understanding people and betting money on people right so a core team should be in place great uh, one more question you know very close to this is how to find the right team uh, great so uh, you know uh, typically in business uh, teams go the love marriage way versus the arranged marriage way which means what uh, we don't have uh, platforms yet available there might be few you can leverage linkedin possibly to find matches for teams right to find co-founders to find relevant people which are a part of your core team typically the way it happens is that you go back to your uh, uh, colleagues who have uh, you worked with in the past you know uh, for example i work uh, in uh, say times group now what i would do is the first thing that i would do is i would go back to my colleagues and i would check with them that hey are you inter are you looking for this you know because we are comfortable with each other right we we know each other we have worked together uh, see you have to spend 10 12 16 hours a day with your core team right it is more important possibly than marriage right because the rest you are going to spend with your uh, uh, spouse but with the core team you are going to spend 10 6 12 16 hours so uh, meeting your minds uh leveraging your strengths is going to be very critical there is no right formula to get core team try leveraging linkedin try and get connect uh, with people on linkedin but first leverage your personal network go back to your uh, college friends go back to your uh, possibly colleagues of your where you are working together that is how you can find the right people convince them to join your team 
rather than going out uh, and uh, finding uh, people because uh, initially you might see that those guys are great but uh, as you start exploring that person on a personal level possibly you might not kick off very well and that's not a great uh, sign right that can't take you forward uh, so i would say step one is make a list of people from your network to go back to and leverage the network to find the team and rightfully said uh, you know as venture capitalists look at you as an organization they're looking at the profile of everybody on the team and therefore all that you said is extremely Definitely. important Definitely. Great. I think we could move on and continue the session and take the rest of the questions probably towards the end of our session. Sure. So now uh, uh, the question, a uh, very important point uh, that I want to mention is that while everyone is negative about the fact that you know uh, market may be paisa hai nahi and so on and so forth, from a venture capital perspective, I believe this is not true. This is precisely the time to up your game. of raising money this is not the time to put down your weapons start preparing for raising capital because equity capital is slightly a longish process if you start today possibly i would say 3 months down the line or 4 months down the line you will essentially uh, uh, you know get to a uh, funding stage right you will raise a round of capital then so this is not the time guys to put down your weapons this is precisely the time to essentially start looking at raising money now who can possibly raise money or which are the businesses which are attractive from current situation uh, from a capital raising perspective and i did my research i did my analysis spoke to lot of venture capital funds and i have personally four categories of businesses the first category i would say or what i term as covid negative businesses these guys have been tested negative uh, to corona virus right uh, now what do i mean by covid negative businesses uh, not all businesses are crying actually let's look at this very critically right when demonetization happened all of us were struggling to get cash some of the businesses like real estate etc faced tremendous challenges smes in itself faced tremendous challenges because of demonetization but fintech businesses gained the most paytms of the world phone pays of the world were the ones that gained a lot and raised lot of money in the demonetization phase similarly what is happening right now is that not all businesses are crying some businesses are actually uh, you know hoping that the lockdown should be extended some businesses are actually hoping that you know what people should be scared to go out and eat uh, outside right because their business models are ready to leverage the current situation and some of the businesses covid negative businesses if you think of are in front of your screen look at what has happened to edtech look as what has happened to healthcare look as what has happened to insurance online consultation essential e-commerce imagine you know right from uh, simple commodities all the essential goods these guys are making are minting money at this point in time digital content just check netflix stock price from somewhere around february to right now and you will realize what is happening the amount of subscriptions that netflix has done uh, during this period is crazy gaming uh, 10 standard 8 standard 9 standard guy sitting at home uh, uh, you know is is hooked on to these online games they are making tremendous money rural economy and agri businesses at the end of the day we are consuming food sitting at home so the base businesses are actually getting tailwinds and are actually leveraging the current situation and are benefiting so investors are going to go back to these businesses and now look at investing in these businesses so if you are an existing sme see if you are in the covid negative category if you are a new idea see how you can actually uh, you know kind of leverage some of the uh, new uh, habits that we are going to get into right people are actually considering that do we really need to uh, go to a classroom to learn right education technology is going to go in the next level so 
these are the businesses that i call covid negative businesses and if you are one of the covid negative business then definitely you can raise capital at this point in time the second category is what i call it is once we are out category right so covid negative businesses are businesses where we are going to form uh, possibly new habits right uh, sitting at home we are going to call e-commerce sitting at home we are going to order online and so on and so forth but there is a very interesting category which is once we are out category and let's try and understand what once we are out category is just try and think of this what is going to happen this 31st december if not this 31st december what is going to happen the next 31st december people are going to party like there is no tomorrow people are going to go out and party like there is no tomorrow and these businesses are suffering today big time but definitely are good opportunities from an investing perspective uh no matter how hard we are pretending on social media about how we are now eating clean how we have a healthy lifestyle how we are you know eating salads and home cooked food when the next the moment your favorite restaurant is going to start delivering your favorite food the moment the uh, you know pani puri guy is going to be safe enough for us to go out and uh, uh, you know consume we are not going to stop because old habits die hard these businesses are suffering today are facing challenges today but once we are out guys these businesses are again going to boom right and restaurant businesses are one such examples we won't be able to resist so currently investors are saying that you know what these businesses are struggling let's actually take advantage of that and invest in once we are out businesses categories because we can get them at cheaper valuations we are going to get to do something called as bottom fishing so let's invest in these businesses at a lower valuation let's fund those businesses wait because once we are out these businesses are again going to get back to normal this is the time for investors to buy cheap and that is why if you are in a category which is in once we are out category then again it's a very good time for you to reach out to investors and actually raise a round of funding the third category and which is very critical guys is again as i said it shows the resilience of the team and what we are calling as holding the fort and adapting or what we are calling as the fighters guys entrepreneurship is all about showing resilience entrepreneurship is all about you know uh, steering through this entire uh, pandemic or whatever situation is thrown at us it is all about pivoting the guys the founders who are actually fighting very hard pivoting their businesses only to survive and sustain who are showing resilience are again giving a strong message to investors that you know what you give us money we will not let your money go down the drain we will fight to the last penny and we will ensure we will give you returns so using existing infrastructure to explore new categories to explore new businesses so that we can survive so that we can sustain are the guys who are again very good fit for raising a round of money and i'll give you example this brand called wow momos you would have heard of this brand which supplies momos which used to actually deliver momos right now food business is completely at halt but what the brand has they have certain outlets basically they have real estate and they had a very strong network of delivery guys now this is the existing infrastructure that they had what they did was just to keep generating revenue and just to pay salaries they tied up with brands such as itc nestle etc and started delivering their products to customers so they used their real estate which were their kitchens as warehouses and they used their delivery guys to deliver products of these large brands like nestle itc etc why just so that they can keep generating revenue 
just so that they can pay salaries. So they leverage their existing network to actually innovate and to actually keep their business floating. Again, a very good category. If you are pivoting, if you can show the ability to pivot, then again, it gives a very strong message to investors that we are not going to die so easily, right? As business owners, we are going to keep fighting. And that is what an entrepreneur, that is what an investor looks at, right? How strong is the founder? So the third category, guys, my category, third one is the fighters. If you are in this category, you are again a very good, I would say, uh, you are very well poised at raising a round of capital, right? And finally, the fourth category, until now, VCs were not looking at manufacturing so closely. Suddenly, because of what is happening between China, between, uh, you know, uh, the global economy, uh, the, the way people are reacting to China, there is a very strong, uh, uh, you know, there, there are people who are thinking that India would benefit out of this. India would really, really kind of take the pie and manufacturing can shift from China to India and we can actually benefit out of this entire, uh, you know, uh, global phenomenon what is happening. But let's try and think of it. All of us are possibly SMEs, MSMEs, maybe in manufacturing. Let's think of it. Is it that easy? Today, what we need to, if this needs to happen, what we need to focus on is capability, right? If you are a very, very commoditized plastic uh, container manufacturer, will you get VC funding? Possibly not because that is a commoditized item. What we are looking at actually is innovation led manufacturing, right? Now, what happens in China, right? We create chipsets, we create mobile phones, we create motherboards, we create laptops, we create, uh, you know, solar panels, for example, you know, uh, I was surprised to know that in India, we are 92, 95% of solar panels are imported from China. Why? Because we are just not producing it. We are just not having the capability. Now, if you are a business who can show that capability that you can produce innovation led manufacturing, you can produce certain innovative items, right? Technology driven items, then possibly venture capital money can be available for you. Again, my message is very clear. Commoditized items will not get funded. If you are really looking at taking the pie of shift from China to India, you need to be in this category and then a lot of money will be available to you because yes, people are thinking that from China factories would shift to some of the Southeast Asian geographies. So the fourth, uh, uh, I would say, uh, the fourth category in my mind, which is very interesting right now uh, from VC funding perspective is innovation led manufacturing, right? Uh, so to summarize our discussion for today, what are we going to, what did we look at? First thing is SMEs do get funded by VCs. It is not only startups, right? It all starts with businesses. You know, it all starts with understanding or building your knowledge about capital raising. First, get that in place. Understand how do we go about raising capital. Understand what is valuation, term sheet, due diligence, etc. Right? Uh, second point is that there is enough dry powder available even right now to raise money. Your 100 crores of funding is definitely available. If you're looking to raise 100 crores this year, I can assure you it is available. The question is about who will get that money. Businesses with highest probability of raising capital in the current environment will get money. Focus on building a solid team. Focus on innovation. Focus on building your understanding of raising capital and focus on scalable businesses, brands, and that is what will fetch you funding. These are the immediate to-dos for you. If you are looking at raising capital in the current environment, four categories will fetch money. COVID negative businesses, once we are out category, the fighters who are showing resilience and innovation led manufacturing businesses are actually very well uh, positioned at this point in time 
to raise a round of funding. So, final take from my side is that step. This is the time to step up your fundraising game. This is the time to kind of hit the market, reach out to investors, and raise a round of funding. Because by the time you raise capital, three, four, five months would go, and by say October, November, you would have a round of funding. Uh, you would have deep pockets to kind of fuel your growth plans. So uh, that's it from my side. Uh, again, uh, open for uh, questions. Uh, over to you. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Vikram, for Thank that. Uh, and before we go to the final part, you know, I'd like uh, all of you all to know that this is not all, uh, you know, if you're thinking that you want to hear more and understand more from Mr. Vikrant, you know, beyond today's session and the Q&A that we're going to complete with, uh, you're also going to hear from him, uh, you know, as a part of the two-month accelerator cohort program that we're coming up with for all the uh, MSMEs who'd like to join. It's going to be a two-month program wherein various business aspects will be covered in your own individual business context. So where you come with your business challenge and we solve them for you. And Mr. Vikrat is going to be definitely one of the mentors out there among you know, 10 other mentors who will be a part of the same program. So we shall look forward to you there as well. And uh, coming now to some of the questions that need to be answered. So there is one question uh, in front of us saying, um, can we uh, get VC funding from high net worth individuals or do we have to go only to fund houses? Uh, so uh, when you, uh, so the way things happen is you can see, you can raise equity front funding from anyone, right? Either it is an individual, either it is a venture capital fund, either it is a private, a private equity fund. These are various stages. Typically what happens is the first round you raise from your friends, family and HNIs, you know, individuals. When your business is typically in the idea stage, you go to HNIs, you go to individuals to raise a round of funding. As your business shows proof of concept, which means what you have an idea, you raise money, basis the product which you've developed. Now customers have actually bought that product or service. That is the time when you need more money and therefore you go to funds. You know, HNIs individuals have a limited capacity to invest. They can't give you 50 crores of funding. Maybe they can give you up to, you know, two crores, three crores, but now you need 10 crores. So the next stage is venture capital funding. Beyond that, you need 50 crores. So that is the stage which we call as private equity funding. Now, angel, VC, private equity is all the same thing, raising money for our business expansion from investors. But the route is equity, the stage is different, and therefore these are different phases in our investment rounds. So you can raise money from anyone. You can raise equity money from your friends, family, HNIs, VC funds, anyone. There is no restriction on that. Great. So a logical question that comes next to that is how to find a VC investor? Uh, great. So, uh, you know, you need to be uh, in the network. You need to build that. Uh, it cannot happen overnight, right? Uh, see, uh, if you are, I'm going to put you in the steps of the investors. If you want to invest in a business, how would you go about doing that? What you would do is network plays a very important role, which means what you would look for introductions. You would look for co people connecting you with entrepreneurs. So what you need to have is number one is you need to have a mentor or an insider who can, who can actually introduce you to venture capital investors and funds who have been there, done that who has been there done that, right? So uh, 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 just to give you an example, uh, you know, uh, if, if I were to raise a round of capital, I would first look at a mentor who has raised a round of funding, who's coming from venture capital industry, who would introduce you to investors. So when the investor gets your introduction mail, they know, oh, you know what? There is a credible person who's introducing you, right? Random emails, Random mails written to VC funds never work. You know, the cold calling spray and pray approach in VC industry does not work. You need to get a mentor who is like an insider, who can mentor you, who can actually introduce you to investors, who can actually guide you how to create business plan financial models. 
and that's your first step so uh, get an insider by your side who can mentor you it's not a process which you decide that okay you know what i want to raise money today and tomorrow you have 10 investors in front of you no you have to actually build your network right and that effort has to go from your end second thing is keep track of uh, you know platforms such as venture intelligence your story inc 42 now these are the platforms where you will get to know on a daily basis who gets invested who are the investors looking at healthcare businesses who are the investors looking at agri businesses it's like economic times for vc funding right so get into a habit of reading these platforms as i said increase your knowledge about venture capital funding by doing all these different types of efforts and then you will be ready to raise a round of funding and to get introduced to the investors wonderful i think one another question we can take up here is is saying while taking funding should we necessarily give a share of profit uh no uh, again a misconception right uh, equity investors do not look for see these are not partners in your business they are just financial investors equity investors venture capital investors do not look for a percentage profit in your business they look for capital gains they do not want dividends in fact they want profits to be reinvested in your business to grow your business further the idea is i'm going to put in 100 rupees today 5 years down the line the value of that 100 rupees is going to be 1000 rupees capital gain is the business is the game it's not dividends it's not percentage share in profit if i am a venture capital investor i would invest in your business i would take say 10% stake now i don't want 10% profit of your business but 5 years down the line i want this 10% to be bought by some other investor or i want you to list on stock markets so that i can offload my 10% to retail investors or i want us to sell our company so that you sell your 90 i sell my 10 and together we make money so capital gains is the game dividends is not the game in vc funding great uh we have a question from mr prakash chandwani of how he can work out a strategy being a consultant to this i think we can take that up separately um definitely because i think this is a forum for us to try and answer questions around how uh, some of the innovations can see the light of the day through venture capital funding and uh, you you need to keep watching the space for more because our in initiatives are lined up as we have more and more webinars coming up as a part of the free uh, msme uh, knowledge series of webinars we also have the accelerated cohort program coming up and uh, as a part of that definitely a lot of these questions can get answered uh, for you and uh, i would urge you to remain connected with us watch out for emails coming up from us watch out also for whatsapps coming from us that's the way to communicate with us on a co continuous basis we are here to help you network with each other as well and like mr vikrant uh, rightfully said you know having a right mentor and anchor is extremely important to take your business to the next level so whether your innovation that you're looking at today is with regards to your business model changing and coming completely online as a platform and uh, you know providing something that is value not just you to your stakeholders and also to vcs who might want you know in show interest in you uh, it's also about how you do it really how do you get down to the action what are the steps that you will have to definitely follow starting from that one idea translating it into a business model into a plan into a financial model that is exciting a vc to going up to really making it happen so we have the mentors in place so definitely stay tuned with us and continue to interact with us yeah there is one more question we could probably take can uh, innovative corporate give away manufacturing be considered as for venture funding uh so i did not understand uh, what is the meaning of innovative corporate give away uh, i'm just considering can manufacturing be considered for venture capital uh, as i mentioned right yes and i give you examples also 
and simple examples like an agarbatti manufacturer but who created a brand right uh, that is very critical see the value is not only in supplying products the value is actually in can you become a brand the same goes with school uniforms for example it's not about the b2b school uniform sales can i become a brand you know because value resides in that can i have a retail distribution network b2b side also can you become a strong uh, brand in the minds of uh, consumers again uh, i will give you an example uh, jor uh, there was a large manufacturer who was actually supplying potato chips to pepsico right lays for example lays does not actually uh, have their own manufacturing facility they get it from third party manufacturers right so here there was a manufacturer who was actually supplying to pepsico uh, he understood all the different uh, you know uh, measures that the pe that, uh, pepsico takes the distribution channel etc now what this manufacturer did, does was he built a distribution network and he created his own brand which comes at 10 rupees 12 rupees which 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 is all about quinoa chips which is all about uh, kale chips which is all about baked chips and created a brand now that brand got vc funding so yes he was manufacturing to a large company pepsi you know but what what got him vc funding was he leveraged that understanding he built distribution network he created a brand on top of that and that was very attractive from a venture capital funding perspective now why did vc funds invest in that because tomorrow if pepsi wants to expand or tomorrow if uh, balaji wants to expand or yellow diamond wants to expand this can be a great acquisition uh, target because india we are focusing still on potato chips and still on uh, banana chips what about kale quinoa etc lot of people are moving towards you know uh, healthier choices moving towards super foods now if pepsi wants to expand in that this can be a great acquisition target that was the thought process that was the strategy so you will have to add a layer of innovation thought strategy on your existing business to raise a round of funding just don't make it a pure vanilla manufacturing business it won't be attractive see right story sells right you have to make it a very nice story a great market a great brand and that will fetch you uh, funding brilliant example in fact just to extend that a little further like you said you know even quino products so today in the health foods so there is there is somebody we know who was a very small manufacturer of agricultural products millets and what they did was just position it beautifully into health snack foods and that is a it's a wonderful business proposition starting from the way it's positioned in the market as well as really giving a value down the line as a product and today it's absolutely funded by vcs not just the regular vcs it's also funded by social impact ventures because they're seeing the social value come out of this because you're trying to help farmers in the back end through your entire supply chain so uh, like you you know brightly put it it's the way you sell your story yes. to the vcs so just to add to this so fundraising it's not only about finance you know people think it's about it's about what you said positioning brand story finance all of that put together you create try and understand you know uh, raising equity money is possibly going to be the biggest sales pitch in your life if you are selling a, a mobile phone at least the customer is getting a tangible product if you are selling a service the customer is at least getting something in return here you are selling a story a promise that you invest in me five years down the line you are going to great make great returns imagine how difficult it is it is not pure play finance you know it has to be a combination of all of this right so good uh, actually marketers end up becoming or end up raising lot of venture capital money as well because they know how to position it of course finance funding all of this comes together Uh, that's the thought great i think uh, probably we could conclude the session by uh, you know uh, summarizing a couple of things for ourselves firstly that 
being an SME, definitely we fall into the category of you know receiving funding under VCs. Uh, uh, venture capital is definitely a place to go for brilliant ideas that come from ourselves. Uh, it can be in manufacturing, it can be in services, it can be in trading. No matter what business you are in, you can attract the right kind of funding if you can, if you wish and if you will. Um, another important thing that we understood today is uh, about building the right kind of team that is important to put things together because it's not just about creating a product, it's about positioning yourself and the whole brand value that you're able to sell together and uh, create value, not just for the investor over years, but also for the customers, uh, you know, at the end of the day, all put together. So uh, keep tuned and uh, you, we will stay connected and uh, let's hear more from Mr. Vikrant in future. And we'd love to, uh, you know, take this forward on innovation with all of you. Thank you very much for staying tuned with us today. Thanks for enjoying the session. Bye, everybody.